Okay, let's take a look at the example questions for converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Example A gives us a statement, an if-then statement. It says, if n is greater than 2, then n squared is greater than 4. And then asks us to find the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive, and then determine if the statements from part A, so if the converse, inverse, and contrapositive, are true or false. And if they're false, find a counterexample. So let's start with converse. If the original statement is n is greater than 2, then n squared is greater than 4, the converse is just the same statement in the opposite order. So it would say if n squared is greater than 4, then n is greater than 2. And obviously if a, if a number squared is greater than 4, then the number itself must be greater than 2. So that statement is true. Then we look at the inverse. The inverse is the not version of both of these statements. So in this case, it would be if n, uh, n is not greater than 2, then n squared is not greater than 4. So if n squared is not greater than 2, that means it's less than 2, or it is 2 that would mean that n squared would be 4, which would be 2 squared, or something smaller. And that's also true. So that one works both ways. And then the contrapositive is the not version, sort of the combination of the inverse and the converse, the not version of the original statement reversed. So it would say if n squared is not greater than 4, then n is not greater than 2. So if n squared is 4 or something smaller, then n is 2 or something smaller. And that also works. So I think we got that all straightened out, no problem there. Let's take a look at example b. Example b says, if I am at Disneyland, then I am in California. And we need to do the same thing we did for the last one. So here we have our if part is, I am at Disneyland. And the then part is, I am in California. So the converse would be, if... I am in California, in California, then I'm at Disneyland. And that obviously is not true, because I could be somewhere else in California. So this one is false. Let's do a red mark there of some sort. That one is false. And an example might be, um, you could be in LA. If you were in Los Angeles, then you'd be in California, but you wouldn't be in Disneyland. Okay, so let's take a look at the inverse. The inverse is the not version. So if I am not at Disneyland, then I am not in California. So if you're somewhere other than Disneyland, then you're somewhere other than California. And that's also false, because, in fact, we could use the same example, right? You could be in L.A., then you wouldn't be at Disneyland, but you would be in California. So you can use the same counterexample to show that that one does not work. So that one's also false. Finally, our contrapositive is the not version, and it's reversed. So it would be if I am not in California, then I am not at Disneyland. And that one's true, because if you're not in California, you're somewhere else. And since Disneyland is in California, if you aren't there, then you're definitely not at Disneyland. So that one is true. All right, let's go on and take a look at example C. Example C says we need to rewrite the statement any two points are collinear as a biconditional statement. So first let's make it if then. So we could say if two points are on the same line, line they are collinear. And then we can make that biconditional by saying, 
if and only if two points on this are on the same line, then they are collinear. Or if two points are on the same line, two points are on the same line if and only if they are collinear. You could say that too. Two points are on a line if and only if they are collinear. So that makes that a, a biconditional statement. And there we go.